All right. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, everybody, to the Saturday Morning Mastermind. I'm your host, Samantha Studebaker-Carl, and I'm here with my good friends, Karen and Catherine and Dan and our new friend, uh, Carmen. And then, um, so today we are going to be talking about, well, we have been discussing the book, The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. And we're on chapter 15, and today is actually part three of chapter 15, because we've been discussing these uh, different habits that he's talking about in here. Let me see. Let me get to the end of the chapter here so we can kind of um, review the habits. And then um, today we'll start by talking with habit number five. Let's see. There's seven different habits. <clears throat> oh, wait. Before I start talking about that... Um, Let's give everybody an opportunity to jump out and say, hey, where you're from, and um, go. For, and then, we'll, then we'll start the discussion. That sounds more appropriate, right? Okay, guys, jump out. <clears throat> Hello, this is Catherine Kruger in Boulder, Colorado. And I can't believe we only made it through the fourth one last week. <laughs> but I think that was one of the 10,000 hours, so I guess it's okay to spend an hour on 10,000 hours, but um, yeah, looking forward to completing this chapter today, hopefully, and uh, glad, so glad you could join us today, Carmen. It's always wonderful to, to have uh, new members with us, uh, or new, I don't know what we call, what are we called? Not really members, but you know, participants, <laughs> and uh, we're kind of a crazy bunch, but I think we're likable. You'll, you'll know real quick. <laughs> we don't, we don't pull punches really. It's not your traditional um, mastermind that you might be used to. We keep it really real here. And that's one of the things that most of us treasure the most about this group. So looking forward to the discussion today. Karen, did you want to jump out? Maybe. I, I had started on my diatribe. I was talking away. Good thing, <laughs> Good thing I have enough memory left to remember what that was. <laughs> this is Karen Lohoff. I'm in the East Valley, which includes the little, little burb here. It's a little cow burb of Chandler in uh, the East Valley of the Sun, which is Phoenix, Arizona area. And uh, not too sunny today. And interestingly, I think the next four nights could well be near freezing. And <laughs> since uh, I, don't, I don't know about Dan and Carmen, but, the, but um, Catherine and Samantha do not live in desert country. Well, I guess I'm never sure about Colorado because I didn't think Wyoming was desert, but man, what a desert Wyoming is. Anyway, um, I'm from Wyoming. Um, anyway, it's extra cold in the desert and extra hot when it's hot in the desert. Although I was telling my son, whose puppies these are, uh, that they they must have lived through hell about 10 days ago when it was um it wasn't too cold i think it was like in the 40s um but it was 100 percent humidity not that we had any rain isn't that interesting you can have 100 percent humidity and not have any rain or snow or hail or sleet or mudslides or <laughs> anyway um but my my brother had been back in washington dc in the probably the 80s 70s 80s late late 70s early 80s and and you know when you're when you're from up by yellowstone park which is like on the montana border um you know you grow up cold you just kind of grow up used to being frigid and he said he'd never been so cold in all his life as the, when he was in washington dc because of the humidity so Anyway, a little lecture on weather that I don't begin to under, understand, but welcome, welcome, and let's get going.
Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, Dan said that he can't talk right now because he's in training, but he wanted to let everybody know that he's out in Las Vegas and it is cool and cloudy out there. So I know that's probably torture for Dan because he loves it when it's like a thousand degrees outside. And um, and you're right, we are not anywhere near the warm where I am because I'm in Indianapolis, Indiana. And um, yeah, it's, um, it's kind of chilly here, although we're having a heat wave. It's going to be like 36 today, I think. <laughs> I don't know. Something like that. So, uh, hey, Carmen, did you want to jump out and introduce yourself and just say where you're from? See, you're unmuted, but I don't hear you okay can you hear me there you go now i hear you okay i am from missouri and it is starting to warm up here as well it's 33 this morning and it's going to get up to 50 and i'm very excited about that so that's a little bit about me awesome well welcome welcome thank you all right <laughs> glad to have you on today hmm. Okay, guys, so let's start, uh, let's start talking about this chapter here. Okay, so we're on chapter 15, which is Cultivate, cultivate Slight Edge Habit. And um, so I'm just going to read the last uh, part of the book here, or the part of the chapter here where it talks about these seven habits. So it says, here are seven powerful positive slight edge habits. Number one is show up. Number two is show up consistently. Number three is cultivate a positive outlook. Number four is be committed to the long, for the long haul. Remember the 10,000 hour rule. Number five, cultivate a burning desire backed by faith, not hoping or wishing, but knowing. And number six, be willing to pay the price. Number seven, practice slight edge integrity. Do the things you've committed to doing even when no one else is watching. So today we're going to start with number five, because we covered uh, one, two, and three in part one, number four in part two. And then so today, hopefully we can get through five, six, and seven. But if we don't, we don't. And we'll just keep on going with this. And, and for those of you who are watching uh, this as a recording or listening to it as a recording, uh, below the video on YouTube, you'll find links to part one and part two. And then the... Um, the future parts as well so you can always go back and listen to previous ones or go forward and listen to the future <laughs> that's the future to us but um it'll be the past to you probably if you're watching this later on so okay so number five cultivate a burning desire backed by faith let me jump to that section real quick and we can kind of read a little bit out of there let's see <clears throat> All right, so he says, early in this book, I said that just wanting something isn't going to get it for you. He says, the truth is, desire in itself is often a petty, fickle, weak thing. You want something, and then the feeling passes. He says, sometimes, though, desire gets deep down on the inside and starts to burn. That's the kind of desire that gets you up early, keeps you up late. It's, it's what keeps you motivated to press forward when adversity hits. And then he says, uh, the truth about burning desire, it is a powerful force and it works in two different directions depending on what you see. So it can either work for you or it can work against you um, depending on whether you're focused on what you want or what you don't want, um, <clears throat> which is the thing that's going to motivate you. So um, what do you guys think about uh, this, this part, this habit, cultivating that desire backed by faith. He mentions a lot about the Think and Grow Rich book. Um, I don't know if everybody has studied that one, but I know that um, many of us here have. <clears throat> what do you guys think? you think it's important to have a burning desire to achieve? <laughs> I think faith is paramount. And um, I had this demonstrated to me so strongly this week when some adversity came up and I pretty much went into a state of fear on multiple levels <clears throat> and combined with the lack of sleep and stress that I was already under like my body. I don't have migraine headaches. Like that's not one of my afflictions. <laughs> thank God. 
but like I got this migraine and I was not, I mean, I, my body just shut down and, um, it was, I don't know how long into it it was, but I, you know, I started going through my Byron Katie questions and stuff because I realized, you know, I was doing it to myself. So I, I recognized that I was, you know, focusing on what I didn't want and all of the things I wasn't supposed to be doing. So I, I put on some mantras, like I tried to bring out all my tools to pull myself out of it. But when it, when it came down to it, it came down to realizing, oh yeah, God's got this shit. Like <laughs> I am so blessed in so many ways and things always, even if I don't understand it at the time, things are always happening for a reason. And um, that is demonstrated to me daily. Like I, I won't understand something. I'll be questioning why something happened. And then I get, I find out the next day, oh yeah, well, that's why that happened, you know? So, uh, so in the end, to pull myself out of that downward spiral, it came down to faith. And sometimes that's all you have. And so that's really difficult for people that, and I'm not saying it has to be any one particular faith, like whatever your faith is, whatever you believe in. Um, some people don't believe in anything and that causes a hopelessness where they're living in that hell all the time. And it was horrible. Like it's been a while since I let myself go there. And uh, cause I practice daily not to go to those places. And, and it was, um, it was kind of fascinating in a way. <laughs> you guys, this human experiment. Sometimes I just have to like totally pull back and laugh at the whole thing, you know, but, at the time, it was a pretty horrible experience. Like my body was just went through horrible things caused by my mind. Well, I think first of all, am I being heard? I don't even see me. I don't even exist. I hear you, Karen. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, I think everybody needs to understand my mindset so that when I come out, you can say, oh, her again, and not necessarily buy anything that I say. Because Dan has disguised himself today as G5, I was thinking we had some uh, robotic alien in from the fifth planet and <laughs> not just plain old Dan. <laughs> No, I'm loving it because Dan was so sweet to call me out first thing and say that he was glad I was here. Um, let's see. I, I kind of had, a, a, I guess, maybe a similar experience to Catherine this week, um, yesterday, and kind of smeared uh, lightly across some of the other days in that... Um, I think, don't, don't you feel sometimes that you get spun around, turned upside down, like maybe somehow you got into uh, a washing machine or, or, you know, something happens strange. <laughs> um, I have gone through what I have realized many people term a faith crisis uh, over the last six, eight weeks. Um, not that I hadn't turned from and realized at least well enough to write it down five years ago and I finally saw it because I happened to be looking back through some of my journals. Um, not, not that I hadn't realized that I had really turned away from the faith that I was raised in, but I hadn't been challenged to the point where I had to ex express to a family member or I felt like I, like I did that, you know, that this was the case. And that is always the scariest point because none of us want to be a uh, left alone man. <laughs> I think it's always really hard when you're a woman and you're left alone man. I mean, it's, I don't know, it just seems more scary. But, um, but anyway, um, over the years, I have realized that 
it can be a bit difficult to, for many of us, because I, I see this all over the web, it can be difficult for many of us to figure out our purpose in life. I mean, I was raised, oh, I'm a child of God, oh, this, oh, that, oh, you know, whatever. But, uh, you know, when you need to kind of figure out what it is, you might be planted here to uh, express uniquely and for the benefit of others and put that down in words and um, keep that in mind on a regular basis. A lot of us flail about, well, I don't know what my purpose is. Well, I don't know what my purpose is. Well, now I have about 80 purposes. <laughs> uh, really, I would say that I have probably five, six um, that I go over every day and express to myself and so forth. But I've been reading a book, I'm going to put it out here, not because I think that this is a book that I would recommend that we all pick up and take like we've been doing The Slight Edge. I think it would probably turn off too many people with too many different kinds of religious backgrounds. But this book is called Absolute Happiness. Just a fabulous book. I will put it in the, in the what's it when I uh, get myself together. But um, it's really about how the mind works and it's specifically how our subconscious mind works and I've been trying to figure out how to get in there dig around find out what's in there and change some of that because I know that it hasn't been serving me particularly well to my taste anyway and one of the first things that I disagreed with and I think it was I, I got to chapter five before I disagreed with anything um, or or, or thought maybe I wasn't sure about it. It's not that I disagreed with it, I just wasn't sure about it. And he says that your purpose, our purpose, all of our purposes, is to fill our, fulfill our desires. Well, that kind of went smack up against what I was <laughs> raised to think. You know, first of all, to have desires, to know that you have desires, is kind of like a selfish kind of thing is what I was thinking most of my life. And so I'm thinking, well, here I've got, you know, six purposes that I go over every day in my life and remind myself of and try and get better at fulfilling. And what? Their desires? My purpose is to fulfill my desires. So, and of course, this is kind of back to G5 being dead. <laughs> you may say, I think you're all screwed in the head, which is true. But anyway, um, I... I, I realize that even as much as I do with trying to move forward with the purposes I have decided are mine to do in life, that there are days like yesterday where I'm in the dryer, I'm being tossed around, uh, spun around upside down and all that kind of thing, or the washer, I don't know, whichever one. And I just can't, I, I, just, I just can't get it right. And um, so then you kind of hope that you have enough faith that you've built up that you can't, when you come out <laughs> and get unfolded from whoever folded you up, pulling you up, uh, that you can um, head, head for your, your desires again. So that's, <laughs> if that hasn't turned you all, like, what? Um, then I'll try again later. Uh, Karen, I just love you so much. Um, <clears throat> you're so funny sometimes. I don't even think you realize. <laughs> you, could, you could be a comedian. Um, <clears throat> I think maybe sometimes you say, say, say things just to see what our reaction will be. But um, <clears throat> I... I I want to touch on what you said here in a moment, but I want to read what Dan said um, when, when other folks were talking is because he, he commented on here as well. He says, um, I agree. We tend to say, Oh, I want this or I want that, but do we really want it? And, and uh, is our desire strong enough to push us forward? Usually it's not. And he, he says, I agree. Fear really kills that original desire. <clears throat> and, it, and it's funny because fear can get in our way, you know, so much in so many different aspects of you know we think we just can't do it so we don't even try we kind of touched on that last week of how when we get overwhelmed with a task that we ultimately we say that we want this one thing but it seems so big and huge that we just can't possibly 
achieve it. So then we don't do anything, you know, which is ridiculous, but, um, it's, it's because of this, in my opinion, and this whole instant gratification aspect of our society is we think that if we can't get it right now, what's the, it's not even worth it, which is ridiculous. Right. Which is why this, this particular, um, habit is talking about, you know, get that burning desire, get that thing built up in yourself enough that you can, you you really, you can, do the 10,000 hours that's saying that you're going to have to put in in order to achieve whatever it is you're trying to achieve. Um, <clears throat> and then Dan also commented on your washer and dryer thing. He says, <clears throat> I think we're all in the proverbial washer and dryer, hoping we will come out clean in the wash and dry to move on to our dreams. And um, I think that's, that's true. I think we all go through those trials and t- tribulations in our life and, I think that's just part of it because if we don't have, uh, if we don't experience <clears throat> some unpleasant stuff, then we don't appreciate the the pleasant stuff when it's happening. So I think that's part of it. That's, there's always two sides to the coin, right? Um, but on your topic, uh, Karen, we were talking about, you know, life purpose and I'm going to look up that book you were just talking about. Um, and then, um, how you were saying about, um, you know, life purpose is to fulfill our desires. And, you know, I think that's a good point because we, I think that most of the time when we're pursuing something, when we're working towards some kind of achievement, whether it's just getting a list of house chores done in a day, or whether it is working on a big major project to create a multi-billion dollar company. I mean, it, whatever that thing is that when we're working towards some kind of a goal, we tend to have a higher energy inside of ourselves or that feeling of we feel like we have a purpose or we feel like we're, we're, we're doing something that has some kind of a meaning. And, and so I really agree with what, um, what he was saying in that book, um, Karen, because, uh, you know, even if it is, um, I don't know. I, and I, and I think we've been kind of, taught if you I don't know for me I I was raised in a Christian environment and and we were taught a lot of this whole you know you you don't you know you're not the most important thing it's everyone else and everything it's it's all of that is more important than you are you have to put everything else ahead of yourself and I've never experienced all of that creating happiness and within myself but when I focus on things that um that are of interest to me that I feel fulfilled by, then that's when I feel the most happiness. Now, and a lot of times that feeling of happiness comes from doing things for other people, but it's for, it's not by just putting them ahead of myself. It's by um, having that desire within myself to create a happiness in them. You know, does that, does that make sense? It's like you, you, it's selfish. (laughs) <laughs> but it's true, you know? I mean, it's funny because I think that we put so much focus on doing for other people that we we don't even focus on why we're doing it in the first place. If we're doing it because we think we should, then it, it feels painful and drudging. But if we if we were doing it because it's something that we enjoy doing because we're creating something in someone else or we're helping someone else, we enjoy seeing that reaction in that person it's really it's that thing inside of ourselves that we're working to fulfill i mean that's that's my thought on it um but um i i picked up another book recently um that i started reading it's called the happiness of pursuit and it talks a lot about that it's talking a lot about just having some kind of a, a goal of achieving something and by working towards achieving a goal you are fulfilling a need inside yourself that um i think that it's just it, it, no matter what it is I, I don't know that's just my thought on it dan says i get it sam as i'm kind of the same way oh wait did he say something else? no that was it okay awesome i don't know what do you, do you guys jump out and um tell me what you think i had another thought but it's in another section of this this chapter i'll go on later Well, I think to sum up this particular one, faith of some sort, whether you have faith in a source outside of yourself or faith in yourself or some kind of faith or belief is paramount. Like you're just when you, because everybody's going to face obstacles. And when you hit those walls, 
something has to get you through that. And um, it pretty much boils down to faith. So I, that's a good one for sure. <laughs> You know, I had a, a conversation with a coworker not too long ago. She was expressing how um, she's just not happy in her job anymore, and and that she, you know, she has a hard time getting out of bed every morning because she just isn't happy like she used to be. And she had mentioned that she wanted to, you know, take some classes and and maybe work towards a different career path, but that she was having trouble motivating herself to do that. And, you know, I mentioned to her what, you know, that I'm working on pursuing another um, career path as well, which is requiring me to, to study this big mambo, huge book. I'll show it to you. It's like this big. It's huge. <laughs> but anyway, it's, um, you know, I, I know that if I just work on a, a little bit each day, I'm going to get through it, right? But one of the things that I told her that was motivating me, because I was kind of struggling with the, the same kind of thing. I was like, ugh, I got to go to work again. Uh, you know, I had to get up. You know, I don't want to get up in the morning because, you know, I just don't feel like going in. And, um, but I started focusing on what I want to achieve versus what I want to avoid. And, um, you know, I mentioned that to her. I'm like, you know, when I, when I'm focused on what I want to avoid, which is going to work, then I, then I don't want to get out of bed. But if, when I'm focused on what I want to achieve, which is to go through this book and learn this information so I can work towards, um, a different career path, then I'm much more motivated to get up in the morning. And I think that that's a big key in, in helping us achieve goals that we know that are going to take a lot longer than, um, you know, than this instant gratification that we want. And um, it's just where we put our focus. And, and then this whole book talks about, um, you know, just the fact that when you do these little tiny actions on a consistent basis, that's how you achieve your goal. And so my faith part of it comes from knowing that if I get up each morning and I spend 20 or 30 or, or an hour on this, um, on this work that I'm doing, that I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, if I just keep doing that, I will achieve what I'm trying to achieve. And, um, and so we just have to, that's, that's my thought on the faith aspect of it is that we just have the faith that we just do it, then it's going to happen. So, um, just do it like Nike says, right? <laughs> All right. Any final thoughts on this, uh, on this one before we move on to the next one? Carmen, did you want to jump out and share anything? What do you think about what everybody said? I'm not hearing you. I see you're unmuted, though. Okay. Can you hear me there, now? There we go. Now we hear you. Okay. Um, there's a book called Psycho-Cybernetics, and he talks about how we're like a goal-seeking, achieving machine, and how what you said, when we have our goals, it gives us an extra boost of energy. So I agree 100%. And the same with um, how everything starts with desire and thinking grow rich. I think that's like the beginning of the book. Yes, I agree. I concur. Well, this is so much more fun to have another party to our party. <laughs> I don't know what we call ourselves either, Catherine. Um, and I just, I just appreciate Samantha, your um, <laughs> even your suggestion that I could be a comedian. I, I, I swear, I keep thinking how nice it would be to walk into an improv somewhere, and uh, you know, just just walk forward like I own the place, just step up on the stage, and and uh, you know, see how long it would take before I was booed off. Just because I think I just, I just think that would be fun. Plus, you know, sometimes I get on a, on a roll. Sometimes that happens. Um, but I do want to thank you for uh, kind of making things better with reference to uh, associating purposes and, and desires. 
because as I <clears throat> thought through, <clears throat> excuse me, my purposes, I realized every one of them is a deep and burning desire. And one I've had, I, I know for probably 15 years that I've had written down in various places. And of course it's, it's developed over time into a little bit better and more cogent set, sentence. Um, so anyway, thanks. I want to point out one thing really quick before we move on. And that was just something that you brought out that to me is, is really key. And that is, is it my choice to do what I'm doing? That's what, that's what determines how much happiness it brings <laughs> because, you know, like I was able to, um, help arrange to get something to somebody in another country that needed it um, for their health and you know that felt really really wonderful um, to do that because I chose to do that you know it, but when I am forced to do things um, or I feel like I have to do it out of obligation <laughs> then not so much, you know, but you know, it's interesting because I question myself at those times and, and, and just a situation that, um, you know, sometimes I have to help my, I have kids and grandkids and stuff. So sometimes grandma has to help out financially, right? Things happen. Um, sometimes like I'm really, I feel really good about that. And other times like I struck, like I resent it in, and I'm ashamed to admit that because they're my children and grandchildren, but like there's some little selfish part of me that, that's just like, no, you should be doing it on your own by now. You know what I mean? Like, like I just need to kick them out of the nest more or something. And yet, I mean, it's, it's like life happening to them and, and how much do they have to struggle and whatnot. But anyway, um, but I, in those moments when I get resentful like that, and I recognize it about myself and I totally call myself out on it, I remind myself of how many things I'm blessed with every day, things that I don't even have to think about. Like I just wake up and they're there, right? somehow some way like i'll i'll think how am i going to buy food this month and and yet every day i wake up and there's something for me to eat and and i think to myself wow how giving god is like god never just <laughs> god never says to catherine catherine you really need to eat again today god you know <laughs> so Again, I find being human quite um, interesting and hilarious at times. And, um, but I, I, I just wanted to point that out, that I think the difference between feeling happiness on doing something has a lot to do with whether it's your choice to do it, whether you feel obligated to do it, um, whether you resent doing it, you know, and where some of those thoughts and feelings come from. And, for me, it always boils down to, and the thing that got me through this mini crisis this past week was, you know, the, the thing from Byron Katie, which is, um, how do you feel when you think those thoughts, regardless of if they're true or not? Doesn't matter if they're true or not. How do you feel when you think those thoughts? And so, and how do you feel when you don't think those thoughts? And so it comes down to control of the mind. And we did, um, Carmen, just so you know, we, we actually read that book as a group here, Psycho-Cybernetics. It's a great book. We all got a lot out of that. So that's awesome that you've read it. Were you trying to jump out, Carmen? I saw you unmute. not hearing you can you hear me now yeah oh I was just saying that's great and I love that you guys have a sense of humor and it feels light and relaxed awesome 
Yeah, I was going to mention that too, is that we had studied that book. That was one of the first books that we went through when we first started this uh, Saturday Morning Mastermind back four years ago, three, four, four years ago, something like that. I keep forgetting how long we've been on here forever now. So it's just like years ago in ancient history, but, uh, but we bring it up all the time. You know, we bring up a lot of the books that we've studied uh, whenever we're having these new discussions. It's always fascinating to read a new book that has come out in the recent history and compare it to some of the things that were written back then, like, you know, Think and Grow Rich and Psycho-Cybernetics. I think Cy Psycho-Cybernetics was written back in the 1940s or the 1950s or and um, so it's really fascinating to see how those teachings from back then have developed into these newer um, these newer authors that are bringing things out and and um, putting their own twist on the ideas that we learned uh, from those from those master teachers from back then. Dan says, let's see, he was, uh, I think he was referring to what you were talking about, Catherine. He said, it's that double-edged sword at times, damned if we do, damned if we don't, but it's how we perceive it and our perspective. Absolutely. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to um, habit number six, and this one is talking about being willing to pay the price, and um, <clears throat> let's see here. He says, I didn't underline anything at the beginning of this to remind me what to read about it. It's a pretty short little section. Um, he says, uh, when I say be willing to pay the price and I can see people wince, I know that they're thinking, aha, I knew it, here it comes. To be successful, I'm going to have to make this gigantic, painful sacrifice. What do I have to do? Throw away my television, say goodbye to all my fun and forego my favorite foods? Actually, it's not that dramatic. Your dreams may be big, but the steps you take to get there are always going to be small. Baby steps, easy to do, and the price you pay works the same way. You don't have to pay for your million-dollar dream with a million-dollar personal check. You can pay for it with, well, a penny a day. But you do need to understand what that penny is, and you do need to be willing to pay it. Whatever the dream, whatever the goal, there's a price you'll need to pay. And yes, that does mean giving up something. You know, and, and I think that, you know, what he's referring here to is, is like I was talking about, you know, when I get up that extra hour early each morning, that's the price I'm paying to learn this new skill. And I think that we all have to recognize, you know, when we want to achieve anything, whether it's to lose weight, whether it is to uh, have better relationships with people in our family, whether it is to make a career change or to build a business. There's those little things that we have to do every day that are different than what we were doing before. And that difference is that price that we pay in order to achieve the thing that we're talking about achieving. So um, I think that's a, that's a huge thing and we have to be okay with it because if we're not okay with it, like what, you know, Catherine was saying, if we're motivated by the shoulds or we ought to, then it's, it's not going to go that far. But if we're motivated by that desire within ourselves to achieve the thing, then that's where, that's where the power comes from, is that, that desire to achieve, that, that willingness to do that little tiny thing every single day to achieve this bigger thing that we ultimately want. What do you guys think? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I agree 100%. I think it comes down to self-discipline. And I think that um, if you act like you feel like it and you start taking the actions, then you can build some momentum just by getting started. And you might not feel like it every day, but after a while it'll become habit and then it'll be second nature. Act like you feel like it. That is so important. <laughs> Again, it's, you know, are you focusing on, what are you focusing on? Are you focusing on how much you resent doing what you're doing? Are you focusing on what it's going to bring you? I think you're, I, I think it's so spot on. Um, <clears throat> our mind is in control of all this, you guys. That's, that's the main key here. Like our perception, 
yeah, we have like an automatic perception of things, but we can shift that perception by putting ourselves through inquiry and asking questions. Like I use the Byron Katie, but I mean, there's like a million other ways of self inquiry to figure out why you're thinking what you're thinking and why you're reacting the way you're reacting. Um, when he talks about, I think he mentions in the chapter, he, he gave up the softball game. You know, that was something that he had to give up. And there certainly is, even though I don't understand how time works at all, and and it that's one of the things about being human that baffles my mind, but um, we seem to have about 24 hours that we're allowed to count in a day. <laughs> and uh, they, when you get, rolling on on whatever this goal is of yours that you're trying to achieve you know you'll find that it probably is going to take more time than what you anticipated um there's lots of lovely books like the four hour work week and things like that i don't know how they do that shit like i i i mean i'm on more calls and webinars a week than four hours for any of my businesses and i have several so i i, I don't know how they pull that off I have obviously haven't mastered that yet, but um, you, you're going to find that you're probably going to have to give up some things. It doesn't mean you have to give up everything. And in fact, I encourage you not to give up everything because then you are going to resent it, the time that you're putting in, because instead of focusing on whatever your goal is and achieving that, your little monkey brain is going to be over there going, Oh, but I could be off doing this or that, you know, that's what I love to do and blah, blah, blah. So <clears throat> you, you have to reward yourself, I guess, you know, keep at least one thing that is really special to you, even if it's like for me, I have a, a certain mantra meditation that I go through every day. Um, that is my that's my peace for the day. I tend to find peace throughout the day, but just in case it's going to be a really badass day, like I have to do that <laughs> just, to, <laughs> just to keep myself sane. So, um, and if I get into a bad spot, you know, I can throw on that music. It's kind of like a reset. It's like a reboot for me. I've programmed my, my body to, to automatically relax when I hear that music. It's almost like I have self-hypnotized myself with it in a way. Um, but this giving up of things, just, you know, yeah, you're going to have to give up things, but don't give up everything. Don't give up family. I know people get into businesses and, you know, especially if it's like a networking kind of business and a lot of people, a lot of people been burned in networking businesses, you guys. And I myself have too. That doesn't mean I've totally given up on it, but there's days I hate it. I mean, I'll be honest. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, oh, so usually because that's when I'm focused on the, on the bad things, right? Instead of the good things, but still like a lot of people have had bad experiences and a lot of people do focus on those things. And so families tend to you know, not want to hear about it or whatever. And then some quote mentors in the networking field tell people, oh, well, you know, just walk away from anybody that doesn't agree with you. Well, don't walk away from your family, guys. Like when it comes down to it, your family and a few close friends is all you got. And, and maybe your family's not the best. And maybe you've even, maybe you have family other than what your blood family is, you know, whatever you consider family. But don't walk away from those people just because you happen to be on separate paths right now. I've been in this life long enough to know that things circle around in a strange kind of way. <laughs> and uh, that's why this time thing blows my mind. But um, yeah, just, just don't walk away from everything and reward yourself with something to keep yourself kind of motivated. We all have different personalities, different things motivate us, but find out what motivates yourself and find out what you can do to bring your mind back to focus when you need to.
Karen, did you have anything else you wanted to add to this um, this habit of um, be willing to pay the price? I do. I'm having a hard time aiming right at the unmute button. <laughs> um, <clears throat> let's see. I have a lot of things on my mind about this. Being willing to pay the price. Um, with this book, Absolute Happiness, uh, I finally got to a place where there was a technique that I really wanted to try. And I, I could see that it could be really beneficial for me. And <clears throat> so, and, and fortunately, he said that I could either handwrite it or I could uh, type it. And I'm, I, I'm not fast at either one but uh, handwriting is like excruciating. But I also know that, you know, there's all this, uh, this stuff that people believe, and I was taught early on that, you know, you get things, the, the nerve endings going from your fingers all the way up to your <laughs> scalp <laughs> if you, if you um, handwrite. So I, I'm there handwriting this stuff, and gosh, I think, oh, this is not fun. I want to go eat. I want, to, I, want to, I want to do a lot of different things with this. And he does say he's, he's really a kind person and he's really encouraging. He's just really special about, um, you know, making it seem possible that you can do what you need to do. And he says, if you can't follow through on this, if you can't, you know, write this out, then how do you expect that, you know, all these other things can fall into place? And I, and I'm thinking that, you know, that's really true. I mean, there are some things that you just kind of, you just kind of need to stick with it. You need to watch your attitude. <clears throat> so now I'll slip into attitude. <laughs> I love psychocybernetics because I read it when I was in high school, which is not too terribly long after it was printed out. <laughs> Actually, I was in high school in the late 60s, but, um, I, and I might have read it in junior high. That's probably when it was, because I, I, I've told this before, and, and Dan, you can stuff your ears, you can, you know, paint your face red before it happens or whatever, but I decided, you know, with the things that you're supposed to do, because he talks about, because he was a, uh, um, he was a surgeon of the face. What is that called? Um, anyway, he rearranged, rearranged a lot of people's faces and some Plastic of them. Plastic surgeon. Thank you. <laughs> some of them, um, you know, they couldn't, they couldn't see it. You know, they'd look in the mirror, they'd have a nose, you know, up by their forehead, have it brought down in the right place. And they said, no, it looks the same. <laughs> he, he, so part of what, you know, part of what he was teaching is, um, you know, how, how interesting our minds are in terms of what we're able to see and distinguish. And uh, so, you know, a lot of females in, in that time of their lives are kind of wondering if they're ever going to really develop breasts where if they're gonna you know, you know have, have little apricots or whatever so i thought well i'm gonna help this along because i have in my mind exactly what i want and what i don't want and so i'm gonna develop this little mantra plus and i've never heard of anybody else doing this i would just love it if somebody would come out and say oh yeah we did it when i was in high, junior high and high school too but the girls would go down the hall and they would elbow each other in the boobs and they would uh i don't know so i figured you know that would cause you to swell up so, <laughs> so anyway I, I i remember that because sometimes i think you know i'm just not really good at manifesting what i want well that was one of those eras where I was able to manifest what I wanted, or at least that's how I saw it. Um, you know, I would have noticed if my nose had been on my forehead and the doctor had brought it down to the middle of my face. So that, uh, so, so, you know, being willing to pay the price, having the right attitude about that, 
you know, being willing to put in the, the penny a day, which is a great way, <clears throat> great way to say it. And I also really like, if you act like it, um, you'll like it. I mean, because I, I kind of did that last night as I was writing. I think it was the fourth day that I was doing this writing that seems interminable, which it really isn't. I mean, it takes maybe 20 minutes. So um, it's true if you think, wait a minute, I'm doing this because this is what I want. I want to impress upon my subconscious mind this particular thing that I desire. Thank you. You know, I am, I am impressed that that is a book that you studied when you were in school, Karen. I, I wish that that was a, a book that they studied in school nowadays. I mean, that, it's such a huge thing. Uh, that's, it's interesting to me that, uh, that back then they did and now they don't. But, you know, I don't know. That, that, that creates well, too, that too much um, self-thinking, I guess, and they don't want you to do that. I don't know. <laughs> that's not really what I meant. Uh, it wasn't through one of my classes. It, it's just that I was going to school. <laughs> I was uh, I was just reminded that I have been through junior high high school. Okay, okay. So this is just a book that you picked up on your own. That's even better. <laughs> well, I mean, it's you know, I mean, that's pretty awesome that you found that book when you were that age. That's that's pretty impressive. Um, <clears throat> Oh, uh, I forgot. I saw one thing here from Dan uh, that he commented on uh, on a previous um, uh, ta of what we were talking about. He said, um, it's like learning to walk. We crawl first and then we stand up wobbly and fall down and then we wobble as we try, but we keep trying and then up we're doing it. So absolutely. I think that's that's a good um, a reference there. Dan is just to remind us that, you know, if we just keep trying, we can achieve that thing that we want to achieve and the and the faith comes in with believing that that is true so um so we're at the top of the hour guys um so i guess what we'll we'll do for next time is since we still have this one habit left from this chapter is that we'll maybe start our discussion with that and then go ahead and go into chapter 16 um unless we end up talking for the whole hour on uh, habit number seven so be prepared to um to start talking about chapter 16 too all right, do we have any final thoughts on this, um, on these couple of habits before we wrap up for today? Does anybody else want to jump out real quick? Not really. I think that's a great plan for next week. I think we can go ahead and read the next chapter and be ready for that one. Um, what was the last one again? The last one is practice slight edge integrity. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. I remember one of the first companies I got in when I got online and started doing online businesses. One of the mentors said, um, pretend like there's a video camera up in the corner of your room watching everything that you're doing and just pretend, even though it's like you're, you're your own boss, pretend that your boss is watching, you know, and would they hire or fire you or pretend like, you know, you had cameras in all of your team members' rooms, and if they were doing what you're doing right now, how happy would you be? And you know, thing they had me think about things like that, and um, but that's that rule, and all of these rules, of course, apply to life in general, not just business, of course. But that's you know, doing things. I had to get up out of bed the other night to do my one plank a day, you guys, and it was tough. <laughs> But I did it. Thank goodness the one plank a day, I can only do it for 45 seconds. So like I said, it's really hard for me to, to give my son, you know, to, to be able to back out of something that takes 45 seconds. I hate to say I shame myself because I try never to shame and shit myself. But when it comes to my, my one plank a day, sometimes I have to say, oh, now come on, you can't take 45 seconds to help fix your body. Come on, Catherine, get with it. You know, that's when you just got to do it and like it. So um, look forward to next week and look forward to reading a new chapter. And uh, we are choosing a new book, Carmen. So please put in 
make sure that you uh, put in any suggestions for new books that, of course, you don't know what we've read in the past. Do we have a list, just a book list of everything we've read? Maybe we can make one or something. Yeah, in the um, in our Facebook group, there is uh, our pinned post has links to all our playlists of all the previous books that we study. Oh, cool! Have oh, studied. Cool. So um, you just have to look at the pinned post to see those the previous ones. And I may have to add the slight edge playlist. I can't remember if I already added it as a growing list or if it's already in there. Okay, great. I was going to suggest, um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I was going to suggest a John Maxwell book, but I don't know if you guys might have already read it, so I'll check and see. Yeah, I don't think we have studied a John Maxwell book. <clears throat> as a group. I know that we've all read it, well, yeah. but right. I don't think we've done it as a, as a group. But yeah, we need to get some book suggestions. So if anybody's watching this as a recording, you can go to our Mindset Mastery Collective Facebook group and um, help us pick out a new book. Thanks so much, Samantha. Love you guys. I love you all. And it's been wonderful talking to you again. And, um, and it, this is a great book so far. So I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, going into the next chapter. And um, I think what I'll end up doing in the group is probably taking the couple of books that have already been suggested and creating a poll and that you can add books to and vote on and all of that kind of thing. Dan says, bye. I love you all. And um, Karen, I, did you want to say bye? To Jump out, Kat, um, Carmen, if you'd like. Okay, bye. Love you all. Great call. See you next week. Awesome, awesome. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us today, by the way. <laughs> yeah, glad to hear you're going to join us next week, Carmen. Uh, I just love this this um, mastermind, and I just am so glad we were able to have it this morning. And Love everybody on it. And love everybody off it. Although, get back <laughs> on <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had a great turnout last week so uh, hopefully they'll be, be back on again but um, I understand everybody has things going on in their lives so all right guys so let's wrap it up have a great awesome amazing weekend and we'll see you next week on the Saturday morning mastermind bye for now <clears throat>